Yeah, we uh, are excited to get back after practice. Uh, we gave the girls this weekend off uh, just to kind of recruit a little bit physically and also mentally. And uh, what a great way to do it uh, by enjoying the Texas OU football game. And uh, I was able to attend that, so it was a lot of fun. I've been, it was the second time in my career that I've, been, I've had that weekend off to do that, so it was enjoyable. Uh, but we have a big week in front of us. Obviously, Kansas State and, and Baylor are two formidable teams, and we've got to get back into our rhythm and start playing and get ourselves in a position to take care of those victories. Um, Jared, just kind of going back to this weekend, um, you said you were going to have some talks up there with the American Airlines people. You know, how did those go, and you know, how is that goal of yours going? Yeah, so I, I went it and did it. We don't have a final answer yet, but the talks were good. Um, some things are in the work. I should have an answer here in the next week. Um, but you know, the goal is to um, do something really special, and I think we have that opportunity with the way this sport is growing and, and developing. And um, I'm all into making that happen. Is that goal? Is that with Oklahoma? Is that maybe someone else like Nebraska? Is that part in the future? Tentatively, right now, it would be in the preseason, maybe opening weekend to kick off the season, and we would have four teams. So we'd bring in four big teams, try to make it a big event, and kind of like a Final Four type atmosphere for the opening weekend. On your right, Terry. Coach Elliott, so this weekend, the uh, Red River Showdown, it's a big rivalry between us and Oklahoma. With as dominant as Texas volleyball has been, do does Texas volleyball really have any rivalries to to compare to something like that? Who would you pick to be the rival? Who are our rivals in the sport of volleyball? Um, you know, obviously there's Oklahoma and A&M are just naturals for that, right? Um, and I think if you talk to the volleyball world, I think a lot of them would say Nebraska would be a big one. Um, we've just met in so many big time matches that have been so critical and it's been great for our sport and uh, kind of really grown it. But they're a big one. Obviously Stanford and Minnesota we're playing every year right now. and. We've had Florida in years past. Jared, how, how important was that time off for the girls? Uh, three straight sweeps, and and um, now you get to recharge your batteries. How important is that? Mentally? Yeah, I, I think you know we look at we work with a sports science person in terms of their their work threshold, um, physically, uh, some stuff emotionally, and I kind of look at this as maybe kind of like the halfway point of the season. And so just giving them some time off emotionally can help them get back to it. Because these athletes go through a lot with academics and travel and just the stresses that they deal with. And so trying to find them mental time is just as important as giving them some physical rest. But um, based on what we were seeing on the charts, we wanted to give them some days off and get them recovered. And um, they've, they've earned that. They've worked really hard this season. So we wanted to reward them with, with that opportunity. How would you size up Kansas State? And I think Baylor's the only other ranked team right now, correct? Um, In the top 25. Yeah, I think right K-State's just Louisa, out of yeah. it. Kansas State is dangerous. You know, they've played some really good matches. And so, you know, typically we've played a lot of matches with them that have gone five. And, um, you know, they're very well coached with, with Susie, the way that she, you know, runs her, her systems. And, and they're very disciplined in what they do. Um, they've got some a lot better talent this year. So... It'll be a fun match for sure. And then obviously at Baylor is going to be a great game. I'm sure that there will be a huge crowd for us to be able to deal with and enjoying that competitiveness. Just building off what Kirk was asking about, you know, Baylor's the only ranked team. Kansas was right there. And is it tough that this league hasn't really taken that next step to be elite? And how close do you think the league is to really getting more teams that are able to compete at, at, on the elite national level? Yeah. I think you look around the country and you look at the different conferences, obviously the the Big 12, the Big 10, the Pac-12, the SEC, you know, there's there's usually two or three really good teams in that. And typically we've had a revolving door. Kansas was really good at when they made the Final Four. Baylor's kind of made their push in the past. Iowa State was way in the past. So we do get a lot of good hits with that. And I think our conference has proven that this spring. They've got some good wins against uh, the Pac-12. So in terms of where we stand on, the, on a na national basis, uh, we feel pretty good about it. Um, you know, the unique thing is we have less matches than the other conferences, so we're able to train a little bit more. We're able to give a little bit more time off from the emotional side of it and get to make sure that they stay healthy. But uh, you know, the practice gym is where a lot of that happens. Back on your right, Terry. Coach uh, Elliott. So 
12 and 0, you guys have been so dominant forever. How do you keep – what are some of the specifics that you use and your staff use to keep these players at such a level that they're perfect? I mean, 12 and 0 is perfect, but how do they consistently and how do you coach that consistency of just domination? Well, first of all, we got a lot of talent. I mean, let's state the obvious. we got a really good team. We've got a lot of people that have a lot of experience in the sport. Um, and then the goal, you know, is, is – it's really hard to have a program that is consistently good for long periods of time. And I think that's where we've been able to strive for that. And it's a ton of work, a lot of sleepless nights, and never letting your guard down. I think that's the, the biggest challenge that we have. And so for me, you know, with this group, it's a completely different group. They've been probably the hardest working group that we've ever had in terms of consistency. And, you know, we're, we're, there's so much science involved now. We've got a great team with Coach Donnie Mabe, who's in charge of our Olympic sports, Dan Kohler, our trainer. Um, Travis from Sports Science that we work with the Catapult. So we, we are a lot more like Moneyball, really looking at kind of how their body's functioning, where their mind's at, how much we can push them. We have exact amount of practice we should be doing every single day. And if you were to look at our charts, you would see that progressively we are getting stronger, uh, more fit, um, and have more acceleration in the way that we play the game. So this break really feeds into that science. You know you need them a break and you'll see it. Yeah, you can't be good for prolonged periods of time. You've got to find some t opportunities to, to, you know, get them back to – the mental side is the big part of it, right? You want the mental side but also the physical side. Uh, you know, watching, like, Madison Skinner, for instance, just blossom, it, this team seems to have so much talent and so much depth. How, how has that challenge been for you to get everybody involved? Because any one of these, whether it's Madison or whomever, could – could run things at another program. Well, I think the, the big key about coaching is, is management of players and management of staff and, and how you go about that. Um, and it, it makes it a lot easier when you have players that are really bought in. Um, this group, 1 through 18, has been phenomenal. Um, they've all trained every single day. They've been all in for the team. And it's been really a low amount of effort from our coaches. You know, we're, besides the times that we're meeting with them every single day, I'm meeting with you know, two to four players every day. Other coaches are meeting with them, making sure that they're there in the right emotional space, that we're doing the things that they perceive um, that they need, and really trying to help them out. And, you know, the goal is about empowering these young women and trying to get them to a spot where they are confident and, and growing. And that can't happen with constant communication because, again, these athletes are stressed out and they, they, the stressors come from different points at different times of the day and just making sure they're in a good spot. But most importantly, we've got really good people right now. And, that's what I'm probably most proud of. We just got people that want to be a part of this program and are all in for what they're doing. And they're training hard. Uh, Jared, 12 matches into the season, has Zoe been as good as ad advertised? Has uh, Zoe been as good as advertised? I, I think the fan base would say yes. I think her numbers show that as well. Um, but I think statistically is one thing. And then what she brings emotionally is another. And you know, when you compound, compound both of those, it becomes a really special player. She's a connector. She's talking. She's super aggressive in terms of the way that she plays the game, and she gives confidence to the team in the backcourt. So, um, you know, she's been a, a, a bright spot. But the emotional side is where I'm most impressed with it all. When she entered the portal, is that a sprint, don't walk kind of situation, or how did you handle that when she made it known that she wanted to transfer? No, it wasn't. It was kind of a... We were right in the thick of things, so because they had lost a little bit earlier, so I wasn't really paying attention to it that closely. Um, and then as time went on, had a few talks, and then was able to talk to her and get her down here. You know, we I, again, I think you guys recall, but we tried to get her two years ago when she transferred from Santa Barbara. Hey, Jarrett, uh, 12 games, 12 wins. How instrumental, though, was that road match, that five-setter at Kansas, to test the stresses of your team in a battle like that? for that growth area to play in a match that close? Well, for me, you know, with 11 new players, we just didn't know how they're going to perform when they get stressed out. And that's what you want to be able to get to as a coach, right? Like, you want to get to that situation where how they're going to connect with one another, how they're going to be able to look each other in the eye, and can they really fight themselves through this? And they were able to do that, um, which showed a lot. So they've shown me a lot this season in terms of their effort level in practice, the way that they prepare for matches, the way that they go about in, in battle. But that was super special for us to be a part of that. And, um, you know, I always usually ask the players, like, what they think after the match. And my little freshman, Emma Halter, just said, Coach, winners win. And that kind of put it in a perfect scope of, of what happened. Uh, 
uh, Bears had a couple of five setters too, another one with Kansas too. So what would you say uh, their strength is and what's their upside looking you know, far down the road? Um, they have a really talented uh, freshman setter. Uh, both their middles are hitting over 400 uh, on the season. And um, you know, they're super well disciplined and well coached and they can manage the game well. I think you know, they're trying to find some more production from their pins and their consistency you know, all the way around. Just like all of us are. So, um, but their numbers are posting. Their, their middles are posting better numbers than they have in, in recent years. So, they'll be a force from the middle. Uh, a moment ago, you said that this is the hardest working team that you've had here. Who leads that charge? And can you give us an example of like uncommon work ethic that you've seen? I don't think it's it's a collective unit that's doing it. You know, as I was telling my staff this morning, what's so impressive is the players that aren't starters go after everything and they compete every single day. And when the, you know, the, the, the starters that have been playing are having an off day, they take it to them. Um, and they've been doing that. And there's been, you know, there's the, the physical effort, there's emotional effort, and there's the, the communication aspect of it all. And they've all brought that. And it's been, it's been contagious. And so there's a culture where I think our players look around and say, look, I can't take plays off right now and everybody's pushing. And, you know, I think they understand what they're trying to strive for and they don't want to waste any days. It's been super impressive. On your left, Chip. Jared, back to that Kansas match. Um, did they learn something about themselves? Did you learn something? You haven't dropped a game since that. Do you think there was some breakthrough that occurred there that is going to help them along the way? Or? Well, I think they, they understood. Game one, we were up significantly. It was 1911. And they challenged the call. It was 18-12, and the things that we were preaching or the things that we had not done in the preseason happened. You know, we had two overpasses that they scored on during that point. We had a couple of service errors and a couple of hitting errors, kind of let them back in that situation. It got a little uncomfortable, but I think they learned that matches are a long period of time, and you know, you just got to stay steady and, and get in your groove and believe in yourself. And they were able to do that. As you saw as that match went along, we got a lot more comfortable in what we were doing. And, we're able to come out with it. Can you talk about the role that Molly's played this year? Because obviously with all the, the new talent coming in, she's probably had to make some you know, adjustments, sacrifices, whatever. Yeah, so there's been, you know, there's been a lot of us looking at different lineups and different players. And you know, Molly has always been the ultimate team player. But you know, for a few matches, we looked at putting Maddie on the right um, to see what she can do in terms of high out of system balls and what she brings. But, um, Molly has always been the most consistent emotional player for us. You know, there's a lot of trust around from our teammates. She plays the game at a very low error, and she's got one of the best vision I've ever seen uh, in my program. So she plays the game at a really high level, and um, she brings a lot of confidence. So we believe in her, and we're excited that she's with us. Um, at some point, whether it's on Wednesday or this weekend or down the road, Logan's going to set that Aces record. Um, what does that record mean, and how has she kind of progressed in that part of her game since she first got here? Yeah, we've been waiting for it to happen. Um, <laughs> it's, I would imagine it's going to happen on Wednesday night because uh, she's an exceptional server, and uh, she puts a ton of pace on it, but gets good hand on the ball and is able to, to do that. And so. It, anytime that you get teams out of system with the team that we have, it gives us a greater chance to transition and score. So it's been a big part of our game. Only you guys talk about undefeated. Well, yeah, we're trying to go undefeated this week, 2-0. That's what our goal is. One week at a time. <laughs>